our state treasurer. Well, uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with everyone. It's a pleasure because I grew up here in Brattleboro, so this is uh, like coming home uh, to Wyndham County. It's also a pleasure because our <laughs> treasurer of our campaign, Molly Stoner, is a Dumberson resident, so we have a deep ties here in Dumberson <laughs> and longtime educator as well. But I want to pick up on Mike's note of optimism and also the question I heard from Bill around housing. Um, the optimistic part of it for me is I view the Vermont economy as markedly different pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. Pre-pandemic, we were struggling to get people to move to Vermont. We were getting older, our workforce was getting smaller. We weren't seeing the kind of increases in our tax revenues that we'd wanna see. Post-pandemic, that's really changed. We've seen people moving to Vermont. Anecdotally, I heard it. I went to every single town in Vermont as part of our campaign, 252 towns. And Every time I went to a town and talked to a town clerk, they'd say, boy, I'm so busy. I'd say, why are you so busy? And they'd say, well, we've had so many people move to Vermont. We're filing all these kind of property records. And, and I said, well, that's interesting. Can you tell me more about them? And they say, well, they moved from out of state. They paid for their home in cash and um, they brought their young family with them. And I said, well, that's really interesting. And so when I got into office, I wanted to understand is that data there on the, not just on the anecdotal level, but on the qualitative, quantitative level. And when you look at the Census Bureau, you look at the IRS, in fact, it is. We've seen that more people have moved to Vermont in the last couple of years than have moved in the entire previous decade. And when you look at who has moved here from the IRS data, it's younger people in the sort of 24 to 44 age bracket. It's people that have more income, higher incomes of the about 6,000 people that have recently moved to Vermont. About half of them are earning $200,000 or more. So that's sort of the, the good side of the equation. There's people moving here, they're younger, they have higher incomes, and you see that reflected in our tax revenues. Our tax revenues have gone up hundreds of millions of dollars over the last four or five fiscal years. But what that has also done is put a tremendous amount of pressure on our workforce. And it's put a tremendous amount of pressure on our workforce because we have a severe shortage of housing. And a lot of those individuals that moved here with a $200,000 salary probably brought their job with them to Vermont. So they took a house off of the market without adding a worker to the local workforce, which put even more pressure on those of us that earn our living from Vermont, those of us that are in frontline jobs, teachers, nurses, firefighters, anyone working in retail hospitality. So that's the real pressure point on our housing situation. It's good that we've seen increased revenues. It's good that we've seen population growth, but we need to focus on that particular issue if we want to grow our economy anymore, and if we want to take care of a lot of the social issues that we're seeing in Vermont, homelessness, A number one among them. But also, I don't know if anyone here has had challenges getting a medical appointment in the last few months. I'm guessing maybe so. But I attribute that to our shortage of housing. If you talk to any hospital CEO and say, you know, what's your biggest challenge? They'll say housing. We offer a primary care doctor a job or a specialist a job. And then they take it and then can't find housing and they eventually go somewhere else. Or you think about the cost of healthcare with um, individuals who are experiencing homelessness needing to end up in the emergency department. Or you think about traveling nurses that need to be hired because they can't find traveling nurses or can't find nurses to be based here in Wyndham County or other parts of our state because of the shortage of housing. So I think it's everything. I think we need to look at our land use policy. As Mike pointed out, our outdoor recreation and our natural beauty are critical for the infrastructure of Vermont and the future of Vermont. We need to protect those. And those are also drivers of our economy as well. We have one of the largest outdoor recreation economies in the country in terms of the percentage of it, our GDP. So it's really important that we protect that. But it's equally important that we build more housing in Vermont and do it in our densely populated areas where there's infrastructure, where there's uh, services, and where we can do it less expensively. And if we can solve for that, if we can solve for the land use piece, I see no limitation to the future of our state. One of the things we did in the treasurer's office, considering that we have a really significantly high interest rates right now, is we tried to think about how can we leverage the state's balance sheet to support building more housing. And we expanded this program called the 10% in Vermont program. We, we put $85 million and earmarked it for housing. And we said we want to offer these in terms of low interest rate loans. 
So one or 2% interest rate loans. And we've put that money out through the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, through the Vermont Economic Development Authority, through other organizations, and we're gonna support the creation of about 1,100 new units of housing over the next three or four years, including housing here in Wyndham County. And the other thing that we're trying to do is how do you make building housing less expensive? And we do have an investment that we're making in Brattleboro uh, around mass timber, which we think will be the first investment of the like in Vermont. But it's a material that's much stronger than other materials, more environmentally friendly and less expensive. So we need to think about ways we can build housing, but we need to think about ways we can build housing less expensively as well. And this isn't a problem that's going to go away, unfortunately, in a couple of years. We're going to continue to struggle with it over the next decade, in my opinion, in the same way that so many people moved to Vermont and took a house and didn't add a job to the local workforce. We have an older population. We have an older workforce. 100,000 people in our workforce are over the age of 55 years old. The Department of Labor expects 88,000 people to retire in Vermont over the next six years. So we're gonna be seeing people leaving our workforce, but not necessarily moving out of state and opening up a house for a new worker. So as those individuals retire, and we're gonna see a lot of them, if we don't build more housing, we're not gonna have homes for our nurses, our teachers, our firefighters, and all of the other critical resources that we need for our state let alone the tax revenues we need uh, to build a strong foundation for all of our communities across Vermont. So we're working hard on that. Our legislature is working hard on that, and it's going to be a continued focus of ours into the future. The last thing I just wanted to mention is that uh, one of the things that we get to do that's a lot of fun at the treasurer's office is try to reconnect people with their lost money. So we have an unclaimed property fund in the treasurer's office. We have $120 million of unclaimed property that we're holding. Uh, we have a list here for Putney, just for an example, at about 5,000 names on the list. Dummerson probably has thousands as well. And if you go to our website, missingmoney.com, it will have everyone that is listed in our office on that website. And just this morning, I sat down with my dad and showed him this list and said, boy, look at this person. He has $38,000 of unclaimed property. And he said, I know that person. I've been doing his taxes for 40 years. <laughs> so I was able to call and say, hey, we have... $38,000 for you that we're going to send a check your way. So not everyone has that much money, but I do encourage you to check the list and see if you or your family members or others in your community have money with our office. Thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Enjoy town meeting day. Thank you. I think I saw that on TV. You go up there and they arrest you. <laughs> I think we can all be happy with that last part, huh? Charles. Chuck Fish, one of the important qualifications of a leader is that he knows how to speak loud and he knows how to speak clearly. My question is, have you thought of running for governor? <laughs> <laughs> well, Chuck, I, I, I appreciate your confidence. Appreciate your confidence, uh, but uh, you know, I'm focused on my job right now and I'm interested in running for re-election, which we'll probably uh, be talking about in the coming weeks. But thank you very much for your confidence. Joe? Um, I'm Joe Cook. Um, Mike, as I look at our town report, I see that we have a substantial uh, uh, number of accounts that are invested, I believe, in bank money market uh, accounts which as I'm sure you know, are really not very competitive right now. The, uh, our capital fund is projected to uh, yield 0.18%, uh, um, um, at least at the time of the uh, budget. Um, I just looked up, um, uh, for instance, the Vanguard federal money market account is now yielding 5.27% um, uh, without risk, a short-term you know, federal money market account. And I guess my question of you, Mike, is there any reason why the uh, and this is something I'd like to follow up with the, with the uh, select board and the um, treasurer, perhaps at a later time. But is there any reason why um, a municipality like the town of Dummerston should not invest its substantial reserves in uh, competitive interest rates at this point? Well, it's a great question, Joe. You know, one of the things that's going on in the state of Vermont is that, you know, we have a, you know, our bank account, if you will, or our state's bank account. It used to be maybe 100 or 200, 300 million dollars would be in the bank account at any given time. And since we've seen people moving to Vermont, since we've seen our budgets increase and our revenues increase and a lot of federal money coming into our state, 
On average, we now have over $2 billion in our cash account that we're waiting to either be appropriated or has been appropriated that's being waiting to be spent. So at the Treasurer's Office, we get a very competitive rate through our banking relationships of about two, about 5.25%, 5.5%. And that's meant that we've been bringing in tens of millions of dollars in interest income uh, into the state of Vermont. I think it's now the fourth largest an item in the general fund, something like 77, 80 million dollars a year. So that's great. Um, other states will offer programs, a municipal pooled program where you could take advantage of that at the local level, at the rates that we're able to get at the state level. So I think that's something that we should be able to look at. But at the end of the day, whether it's the state or it's the town, you want to make sure the money is um, as safe as it can be and has to be collateralized and it has to be there if you need it. So oftentimes those other funds might not have the same kind of risk protect protection, but longer term, we should think about ways that we can support municipalities by leveraging the balance sheet at the state of Vermont. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Any other questions for Mike? Okay, thank you.